Today we're going to install a Studio Lux toilet. There are multiple variations of the Studio Lux toilet, but they all install the same way. We're very excited about this new line and we're very excited about how easy one of these toilets is to install. If you don't believe us, stay tuned and we're gonna walk through the whole thing. My name is Daniel Johnson. I'm your bidet expert and I'm the owner of manybidets.com where over the past eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. So we're going to start by installing the water inlet connector. Now, if you have a female end coming out of the wall, you would just connect this directly to that. Or if you have a male end coming out of the wall like we do, you're going to use the adapter that comes with the unit. There's an N and a G. The G attaches to this water inlet and the N attaches to the wall. Now the instructions say to use plumber's tape on the wall side only. So we are going to do that. It is um, worth noting though that um, you have inside of this connector a couple of rubber O-rings. So it's going to be a pretty, a pretty snug fit. Uh, we have already installed this once without any issues with leakage. So uh, it's, it's a, a pretty good setup. So we're going to put it on here, but before we do that, we're going to put on a little plumber's tape. And then again, the N goes towards the wall. For this side, uh, they say plumber's tape is not needed. We want the A to be facing up and the B marker to be facing to the side. So there we are. So now we're going to, in a minute, be taking that toilet and putting it on top of these bolts. The tricky part is that we have to line up the inside of the toilet with these bolts, which can be hard to do. Thankfully, the Studio Lux line provides us with a template. So we're gonna go ahead and put this template on. Now this template can't stay here because we're gonna be placing the toilet on top. So what we like to do is take a little bit of painter's tape here and put it down underneath these tabs on either side. We want to make sure that we're doing this outside of the bowl area itself. So you can see that this template shows us where the bowl will rest. If we make sure that we have the tape outside of that area, we make sure that when we install the bowl, we're not pulling the tape up and ripping the tape underneath the toilet. Now all I'm going to do is mark on either side where that is and now I have some marks to know where to line up on the toilet. If you find that it's hard to reach these bolts that are connected to the flange, you can always use the template to drill out the holes in the back which will then allow you to mount the toilet without using the flange bolts. These mounts come with three pieces, an anchor, a washer, and a bolt. Again, you only need to use these holes if you are going to mount the toilet without using the flange bolts in a scenario where the flange bolts are hard to reach due to spacing limitations. So we can see here that this sticker that's on the toilet itself is now lined up with this piece of tape and the line that we put on this piece of tape. So having this tape here did help us with lining the toilet up properly. And now if we pull this tape away, because we didn't stick too much of it under the toilet, it comes away in one piece and we don't have to worry about tape being stuck under the toilet. The next step here is probably the trickiest part we need to take our washer and our wing nut. And we've got to reach in here and put this on the bolt that comes up out of the flange and then tighten it down. If you have someone in the house with smaller arms, this might be a great task for them. 
So now we want to connect the A water supply line to the A water inlet. We want to make sure that this rubber gasket as well as the mesh is in that water supply line before connecting. So we're going to start with hand tighten on both of these and then we'll come back and we'll tighten it down with a wrench with a quarter or half a turn, you know, make it snug. This one's labeled as B. There is a B on the back side of this adapter, but you can't see that uh, without uh, having the adapter uninstalled. So we're not going to worry about showing the, the B. We're also going to hand tighten this one. Finish it off with a little tightening. Again, snug, but you don't need to over tighten it with that rubber washer that's in both of these. And now we have that tightened down. With the, with the house water supply on, now we need to turn on the water supply that leads to the toilet. So now that we've turned the water supply on, we want to feel these connections and make sure that there are no leaks. Uh, you might feel the connections be a little bit cold because the cold water is rushing in. So don't confuse that with leaks. But if you see some water, uh, just keep an eye on those and make sure that they're not leaking. If you do find that there's a link, you can turn this off and tighten down wherever the leak is coming from. And you can also try a little bit of plumber's tape to tighten that down even a bit better. So now we need to put batteries into the remote and then pair the remote to the toilet. This is done by pressing and holding on the stop button until we see the first, third, and fifth lights on this side blinking, which we see now. And while those are blinking, we plug the unit in so that they can link up. And it's running through its, uh, its initiation steps where it's just making sure everything works appropriately, cleaning the nozzle, all of that. So we believe we've installed everything correctly, but it's always good to test. Now, you might say, let me test by pressing the rear wash. Nothing's happening. Why? Well, the seat sensor needs to be activated. The unit's not going to wash unless it knows someone is seated. So let's put our hand over the seat sensor and then let's go ahead and run the rear wash. So the rear wash is now running. If I lift my hand up off the seat sensor, the nozzle goes back in. Theoretically, here's the flush happening. You'll also notice it, wet, it put water around the bowl before I used the unit as well. So it doesn't miss the bowl quite like Toto, but it swirls water in the bowl before you, before you do your business to help keep things from sticking. I could theoretically test all of these options, but we've really tested that the seat sensor works, water is properly getting to the unit, the signal from the remote is making it to the unit. So this has been fully tested at this point. The Studio Lux toilets have a very powerful flush, but some customers have seen that the flush is so powerful that water shoots up between the seat and the bowl here. If you see this, it might give the illusion of leaking because then that water will drip down to the base. All you need to do is adjust the water pressure by slightly twisting the water inlet knob. And once you've done this, you can now test again and see if you've cleared up the issue. All of the Studio Lux integrated toilets installed the same way as this one did. So regardless of whether you're getting the entry level one, the SLI 2000 like this one, or the SLI 4000, the installation process is going to be the same. We're very excited about this particular unit, the 2000, because it comes in at a $2,000 price point and is a very, very solid unit. If you want to see our review videos once we've actually tested it and felt it out more, 
subscribe to this channel and you'll get all of the videos as they're released. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have questions, comment on this video so that we can answer that question and help others who might have the same question in one go. But you can also always email us, live chat with us, call us or text us if you want to reach out to us that way. All of that information is in the video description as well, along with the link to our website where all of that information is readily available and any of these units can be purchased. Thank you so much for watching today and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Minibidays.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.